Welcome to another broadcast of Truth Be Told, where we believe in experience becomes truth. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and joining me as usual, we have the one and only Captain Ron. Today, we go to the other side with the help of a very talented psychic, actually the psychic lawyer, Mark Anthony. Mark, who is a world-renowned, fourth-generation science-based evidential psychic medium who communicates with spirits. He has been featured regularly on major television shows such as CBS award-winning shows like The Doctors. He is also the author of the best-selling book called Evidence of Eternity and Never Letting Go. And Mark likes to combine his gifts as a psychic medium with his experience as an attorney. He relates to each client on a personal level and his positive personal demeanor is an uplifting influence for people coping with the aftermath of a life-threatening, life-changing, or life-ending trauma. We also want to touch on some unsolved mysteries that Mark has worked with. So we want to welcome to Truth Be Told, where we believe in experience becomes truth, the psychic lawyer, Mark Anthony. Mark is back in the house. (laughs) Thanks, Tony. It is great being here with you and Captain Ron. Well, I'm excited because the last time you were here, you blew everybody away, uh, and we found out that he's a smarty pants. He ah, is. He's we do like smart, those kind of guests. Very intelligent. He made me look, well, anybody can well. make me kind of <laughs> look like an idiot. But uh, we're excited to have you here. There's a lot of stuff that's happened since you've been here last, and uh, some things coming up, that things that you're going to be talking about. But first, uh, so catch us up. What have you been doing? What have you been doing in the last probably year, I think, since you've been here? I've been on tour constantly across the U.S. at mm-hmm. a lot of speaking engagements. Uh, last year did the Sedona Spirit Symposium and and the Mystical Mayan uh, Cruise. Oh, wow. Yeah, one of my brands is the Psychic Explorer. You know, so I'm the Psychic Lawyer and the Psychic Explorer. And <laughs> what we did is we took uh, a group of people to mystical locations in the Yucatan to visit Mayan archaeological sites. Oh, and yeah. and right up our Oh, it, <laughs> oh, it, it was great. The only thing missing yeah. was Shirley MacLaine and a, and a <laughs> spaceship full of aliens. I mean, it, it was I'm just I'm sure great. they were there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think they were. And, <laughs> and uh, it, it was really wonderful. And this year... Um, you know, we've kept kept going. Uh, I've already done tours of Florida, Texas. Wow. Uh, it's my second tour of Los Angeles and love California. Um, in two weeks, uh, I think May 5th through the 7th, I'll be in Virginia Beach at the Edgar Casey Association for Research and Enlightenment, where I'll be one of the presenters at the annual reincarnation mm. uh, conference. Then in August, I'll be in Denver at the International Association of Near Death studies annual conference i'm the keynote speaker and presenter there Hmm. and then in august i'm scheduled at the afterlife symposium in scottsdale and uh, i'll be doing a lot of uh, tours and other speaking engagements Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the country um and uh, so if anyone wants to find out like where i'll be and how about you know, to get tickets, they just need to go to my website, evidenceofeternity.com. I also know if they go to the Truth Be Told uh, website, right. they, they can, they can get there. the link to my website as well. Great. And it's, and it's up there right up on, on the on the, the screen. Uh, one thing that we talked about uh, last time you were here about the exploring part, and I want to I wanna touch on that because I'm, I love to explore. I just don't get to do it. Uh, so I get to do the exploring th- through people like yourself. <laughs> uh, I, I hope to do that in the future, but uh, what, give us some of the places that you've been be, uh, and that are some of your favorites that you've been to. Machu Picchu. Oh, uh, don't I, 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 Machu Picchu. I want to go there so bad. <laughs> you know, Tony, do it. Do yeah. it. It it is. It's worth uh, the journey. Um, it is an, an incredibly life enriching experience. Mm-hmm. And get ready for the oxygen deprivation. That's what I've heard. <laughs> my friends went there, and he said, "Oh my God, I had to like have like oxygen masks when he first got there." Yeah. yeah. It it. Um. But but Machu Picchu is an amazing and mystical site. Mm-hmm. Um. And it, it's funny because when you get there, uh, there's the famous yellow train. And you take the yellow train from Cusco up into the Andes, into the mountains. And other people want to hike the Inca Trail. And they say, oh, yes, the Inca Trail, you hike. Well, once I was up at uh, the top of Machu Picchu. Yeah, that's the train. I ran into a group of English college students. 
and uh, they looked really worn out and haggard. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so, um, you know, it's nice to see you. And they said, oh, you took the train. Well, we took the Inca Trail. We hiked it. And I go, how was it? And this attractive young lady said, once you start going up, the up never ends. Oh. She goes, and then it rains, and then it's hot, and then it's freezing. It was quite dreadful, actually. So um, I felt... <laughs> Almost felt guilty, you know, drinking my yeah. coffee on right, the right, yellow right. train back down to uh, the hotel we were staying at. <laughs> but what was really fascinating at Machu Picchu, and I don't know if I should be saying this on the air. Sure, but why it's not? One of those intimate things you say before. No one's before, listening. You're before, fine. Yeah, before <laughs> millions of people is um, I met a voodoo high priestess from Brazil. And she said, do you want to see Machu Picchu at night? Like I'm going to say no. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we uh, gave the guards uh, like five dollars each of the seven of us. And she led us into Machu Picchu at night oh, to wow. the temple oh, of the sun. And she conducted this whole ritual for the gods. And I will never forget that as long as I that live. is and amazing. It was beautiful. And the really fascinating thing is that Machu Picchu glows at night. And really? What, 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 what causes that? Apparently, the Incas used a lot of stones in the walkways that had natural phosphorescence in them. Really? Think about it. Pre-electrical society. And, you know, we tend to think that, you know, we're the most clever society that ever existed. Of course we are. Yeah. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe they didn't have electricity, but they didn't sit there and go, oh, well, we don't have that, so we can't do it. They used what was available. And I'll never forget looking at that going, all right, is this just oxygen deprivation? And, and the, <laughs> I'm just and seeing it, things. <laughs> yeah, and, and the voodoo priestess and, and her Indian friends were like, no, this is this is what it looks like at night, and it was absolutely uh, amazing. So I would say that Machu Picchu is definitely up there. Stonehenge was amazing. And That's from, another place I've never been. I want to go. Well, there's uh, a couple sites in England that are very similar to Stonehenge. One's at Avebury. And what's fascinating about Stonehenge, according to one of my professors at Oxford, there's, you know, several rings mm -hmm. of, of the monoliths. Yeah, because I'm, I'm showing pictures as we're going along Super. so people can see it. But oh, okay, great. So on the inner ring, if you take a Geiger counter, mm -hmm. the natural radioactivity in the Earth is very strong there. Really? Right. And exactly on the line that the ring ends, it drops a little bit. And then the next ring, it drops another little bit. And then the outer ring. So now, the closer you get to the center... Yes. Now, the question is... Is this a little better view of it? Exactly. How did the people who constructed this 4,500 years ago know this? You can't tell me it's a coincidence right. that these rings of radioactivity, which are right on the line where these monoliths are constructed, that mm. that just happened. happened. Right. So, so I put that up there um, as one of the incredible mystical locations. Is there now? Is there? You may may or may not know this, but what other locations around the world that match this similarity that have the same? The ley lines. The ley lines? Is that what you're referring to? Yes, yeah. the ley lines. Okay. Well, we know that Sedona um, has, right. has the vortexes, right. and there are certain locations throughout the world, Machu Picchu being one of them. I um, understand the Giza Plateau hmm. in, in right. Egypt has that. So, so this is something that uh, what we refer to as ancient civilization seems hmm. to be very adept on, on locating. Okay, now, Mark, uh, this is all very interesting to me. Tony and I are both big fans of the old monoliths and all the old um, structures like that. I, I want to know, is this like a side interest that you have, or is this tie into your psychic thing that you have? The, the is that is You know, how do those... It, it's all of the above, uh, Captain Ron, because I've always been interested not just in history, but the, the story behind the story. Yeah. And, you know, when you yeah. grow up in a household, both my parents uh, were psychic mediums. And it's not like, you know, they had the neon signs in the window at the hand <laughs> saying, come see. My dad was a NASA engineer. My mom was wow. a commercial artist. We, you know, we were just sort of the, the family down the street, you know, kind of like, yeah. you know, yeah, the like Adam. Listen, a NASA yeah. engineer is not the family down the street. I was getting ready to say, yeah, that's not exactly. Was like, yeah, well, yeah, where yeah, I grew butcher. up, it was because it was near the <laughs> okay. space center. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> and, and my dad was instrumental to the space program. In fact, um, in the late uh, 1950s, early 60s, when they were discussing the lunar module, right. my dad came up with the idea that 
the lunar module needed to have retro rockets. And a lot of the engineers were like uh, scoffing him. And then one of them said, well, what's your idea? My dad's name is Earl. He goes, Earl, tell us your idea. He said, when you're coming in to land on the moon, you're going to need extra um, buffering hmm. so that you don't make too hard of an impact Correct, yeah. to land. So um, he worked for a company called Reaction Motors, mm -hmm. and they were the ones that created the, the retro rockets for the lunar module. Well, a few years ago, I was privileged to meet Buzz Aldrin. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I realized that I've met both Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. When I was um, a kid, I was working at a five-star hotel in Vero Beach, and I got to carry Neil Armstrong's luggage. You know, I, That's pretty I cool. Yeah, I was That's carrying his golf cool. clubs, and I was like, oh, God, don't drop Neil Armstrong's <laughs> golf clubs. <laughs> right. you know? And he was you know, real nice, but they said don't talk to him you know, because he was real private. And he was with, um, I think it was Dr. Edward Meacham, mm -hmm. who was a uh, you know, mm -hmm. big-time space scientist. And I, I was so nervous <laughs> because Neil Armstrong was like God to me, and I was shaking. And he only gave me a buck, you know. For <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so then years later, I meet I Buzz digress. Aldrin. <laughs> and Buzz is a real character. And see, Neil Armstrong, and, and NASA chose him well. Right. He was all business, all serious. In fact, in a test, he actually crashed a vehicle in one of the tests and then got out and tested it again later that day, not even phased by it. Hmm. I mean, he was the original Top Gun type of, right, type of pilot. Right. Well, Buzz Aldrin's a real character, you know. <laughs> and uh, Buzz, um, what happened is when the Eagle, the lunar module, was going to land on the moon, it overshot their landing site by 20 miles. That's and it, and quite it's, a bit. Well, yeah, it is. And in so doing, they burned up all the reserve fuel. Oh, wow. So then they're on the moon and, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind and all that. Meanwhile, Houston, we have a problem because the ignition switch on the lunar module broke. Okay. That's not that's not the place you want to <laughs> break no, down. No, it isn't. And, and you know, for, and I tell people, you know, could you possibly feel more isolated yeah, yeah, than being yeah. stuck on the no moon? AAA, with, no AAA, no AAA, yeah. no hope whatsoever. <laughs> and President Nixon was notified and a speech was prepared that within because they knew how much oxygen they had, that these American heroes will be dying on the moon. And so Neil Armstrong said to Buzz Aldrin, can you fix this? And because uh, Aldrin was the engineer and he held up a big ballpoint pen. He goes, Neil, we got one shot at this. And, and Armstrong said, do it. And so Buzz Aldrin took the big pen and he jammed it into the switch and he pulled it up and it clicked and the ignition went off. Holy crap. And, and they're like, oh, my God. So the lunar <laughs> module takes off. But then they burned up all the reserve fuel. Meanwhile, Houston is working overtime, figuring out. Back then, they had no no um, computers the way we have them right. or calculators. They had to do all the calculations <sighs> by hand and using slide rules so that the orbit of the lunar module had to be altered because of the different landing site of the lunar oh module. My God. And, I mean, and, and if they were like, 50 feet off, that was it. They did it. They did it. And that is, is that's American ingenuity, mm -hmm. courage, valor at its best. best. Yeah. And it was such a privilege to hear Buzz Aldrin in person oh explain my God, that's that. Awesome. I was like, yeah. Because uh, so, those, I mean, that generation, they were heroes, and and they uh, they, they, they were, were the greatest generation. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I still think we have that. I I do think we have that. Uh, it's still here, and I, I, you know, so I have faith in in us as a people. Wait, right, <laughs> right. We we hope. <laughs> uh, so I mean, that's amazing that you come from that background of your dad. I mean, your dad must have used his instinct and psychic ability, or did he a lot with, with his with his work? See, you, know, you don't oh. see that in a scientist, and, and and a lot of people think that's diametrically opposed to a psychic and a scientist. Isn't that often what you find? That has been yes, yes. That has been the traditional way of looking at it. But now it's starting to change because hmm. now we have a whole field of quantum physicists right. all over the world um, who are now saying, in fact, Dr. Michio Kaku, I right. know you guys know who he is, yes, uh, String yes. Theory. We want to get him on here, yeah. Uh, I hope so. And, and this would be a perfect show if you're listening, Dr. Kaku. Please. Big fan, big fan. <laughs> um, but he recently said in an interview that eternal life does not violate the laws of physics. Hmm. And Nikolai Tesla 
said a hundred years ago that what one man calls God, another calls the laws of physics. Mm. And uh, I know the uh, the show Genius is premiering here in L.A. Right. on Monday worldwide about Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein said there is no matter. There's just energy vibrating at different frequencies and, and we are able to perceive it because it's vibrating at a lower frequency. So what's happening now is you have uh, physicists like uh, Professor Fitz, Fritz Albert pa I love <laughs> Professor Fritz Albert Pop of the German to, Biophysics yeah, Institute to say in Munich. Way, just to, you yeah. have to say it like that. <laughs> he says that when you die, your your consciousness is like the data on a computer hard drive, which gets transferred to the cloud. In that way, we are immortal. So we're not only in. And then <laughs> Professor Hans Peter Dor, the Germans. You know, once once you get the German German physicists, I mean, you can't really get more serious than a right, German right. physicist. But uh, <laughs> Professor Hans Peter Dor is also saying that the consciousness Consciousness survives physical death. We're hearing this now from the Russian Physics Institute, uh, Sir um, Sir Roger Penrose mm -hmm. um, from Oxford University is talking about consciousness surviving physical death. Mm. Uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Gary Schwartz, University yeah, of Arizona, yeah. uh, talks about how the quantum field in your brain, the electromagnetic energy, you can call a quantum field or consciousness or a soul. Um, exists after the body dies. And so what we're seeing since um, for the last hundred years, a lot of physicists are now saying that energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. Right. So that the energy that's in our brain, which is our soul, lives on after physical death. So wow. A That's lot of crazy. Yeah, and, and I think that we're on the verge, maybe within ten, possibly twenty years, of actual proof of the existence of the afterlife. Well, hey, oh, go ahead. Can, can, can I say this? Oh, yeah. I want to say about. You see, Mark, I think this is what in in reading about you before the show, I, I I find that this seems to be the thing that separates you from most of the psychics we've engaged in. You seem just like us to be also searching for the truth. That you've explored all these different avenues. Yes. That that yes. Mainstream science is talking about this stuff now. Yes. And even like we talked about Edward Casey, even the near-death experience stuff, which I know you're interested in as well. Yes. That's that's a very scientific thing. That the, There's guys that have been on coast to talk about how near-death, they study these guys, they compare the cases, they're very similar things in their, in, in their experience. And you're looking at all these different avenues. Like you seem to be see searching for the title of your book. It's, you know, you want to know what the evidence for eternity is yourself. Absolutely, and and I look at it as it needs to be a cross-disciplinary approach, you know, and, and I, I don't like crashing on religion because religion is an attempt to explain immortality, but then it gets our way is the only way, and therefore right. you're wrong, and we must kill you in the name of God, and <laughs> and that's that's where religion right. goes wrong right, is right, when it right. becomes an, an, an extension of people's egos, and also science has... And been the religion of atheism where, oh, no, unless you can subject it to the technology of the day. Well, we know that science is not a stagnant state. Mm -hmm. And the, the technology of 20 years ago is not the technology of I today. bring this up continually. Every time someone gives me some negative thing about what we're talking about on the show, I'm like, you know, 20 years ago they said there will be no other planets around right. things. And that's what I was going to say. And we now just we had somebody from the Smithsonian Library, we had a, a gentleman talking about planets that are pure diamonds planets that are pure metal planets that are pure water sure. and you're just like in fact it's the you don't exact hear about that stuff opposite of what they thought 25 yeah. years ago they thought yeah. it'd be extremely rare to find planetary planets around stars now they say it'll be extremely rare that they won't have planets right so 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 the si mainstream science thing changes 180 degrees every so many years uh, uh, roughly 10 years ago the vatican said yeah. belief in extraterrestrial life does not violate Christianity. I right? loved that. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, the Vatican, you know, I mean, it, it's funny because having been raised Catholic, and I know, um, yeah. Captain Ron, you were too, are saints. If these people weren't psychics and mediums, I don't know who was. Because uh, many of them exhibited um, the, w the abilities that we now know to be psychic, like Bernadette right. of Lourdes. <laughs> I never, okay. ever, ever once thought of that, but that's a fascinating idea. Did you know that there's a patron saint of television? No, come what? on. St. Clair of Assisi. Ooh. Uh, as in a colleague of St. Francis of Assisi who used to 
go into such deep meditative state that he developed stigmata and he would bleed from his hands his feet and his good friend and colleague saint anthony of padua who used to uh, lecture in languages he never even knew or studied which we now call channeling but saint claire she got so sick there she is she got so sick that she could not go to mass and so she would ask god to show her what was happening in church and she would see it in real time with exact detail hmm. claire was a remote viewer and in wow. 1958 when television was invented pope pius the 12th 800 years after her death declared her the patron saint of television <laughs> because she received vibrational messages from what, another source sense. tell me that the vatican that, is that not aware sense. of these abilities right. so so you start examining them over the centuries and if you join the clergy back in the medieval era with these abilities you were declared a saint because you're receiving visions of the holy spirit if you or me or tony just walked around well, a village in france going i see dead people chances are we're going to be the entertainment on friday but night that's at what i was going to ask you that you know because you know, they used to say in christianity prophets and you know all these different uh i guess titles but like uh, you know like in voodoo and and people uh, like you said with us that would see it we were considered especially in Christ christianity in america evil well in the bible prophet okay yeah prophets are good right okay that's what i'm saying Isaiah prophets are was good. a prophet ezekiel <laughs> right elijah um joseph foretelling the dreams of Pharaoh or interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh, which were prophetic in nature. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Jesus foretelling mm -hmm. the future and the healing energies, let alone the, you know, ectoplasmic manifestation that we call the uh, resurrection. So in the Bible, where we're good guys, they call us prophets or good girls, prophetesses. Right. And when they don't like us, they call us mediums or witches. Right. <laughs> well, true. In, in the book of Samuel, <laughs> when, when King Saul... Okay, he's having a rough time. Right. All right, right, David's popularity is on the rise. The Philistines are on the march. And his favorite advisor, the prophet Samuel, had died. So Saul goes to the witch of Endor, who was a medium. She brings forth the spirit of the prophet uh, Samuel, who says, Saul, your time is at an end. <laughs> okay, so then he gets defeated in battle. His son's slain. He, he ends up committing suicide. So the rabbinical community in ancient Judea, said see what happens when you talk to those people and so that's where we get a bad rap uh, in the bible now the way i look at it and the way some of my colleagues look at it is was it not the will of god for david to become the king of the jews the right. king of judea and was not jesus a descendant of david through his mother mary so just because saul's time was at an end prophet samuel's spirit had nothing to do with that he was merely conveying, transmitting information from the quantum field known as the other side to King Saul about what was preordained. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anything negative or evil about that. So anyway, yeah. we, no, can, I mean, we can do a whole we, show we, just but, on that. But stuff. we've, you know, we've had, you know, many psychics on our show and, and, uh, you know, I've seen messages, you know, and comments on our YouTube and on, you know, our, all of our podcasts. And, you know, it's like, oh, you know, you're you're leading the people in the wrong direction. You know, it's an evil. And I've, I did, I find it funny because, like I said, you know, every like you're a prophet. Really, you're a prophet. You're and you're you're doing this for good. I think it's always um, it's like money. It's in, it's the intention of what you do with the money. All right. Is, yes, is what makes it. Well, hold on. The bad that. rap comes from not just that. The bad rap comes from hucksters and 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 nonsenses and rip off artists well, and yeah, all true. these kind no, of true. things too. You, you know, you know anything that's true, anything good gets perverted. It's like when the internet came out. How wonderful! And all of a sudden, pornography is on it like right. you know, a week later. <laughs> right. and, and so people tend to take something good. It's like people always say, well, "Why don't the aliens come and talk to us and and give us technology?" Right. Like we won't immediately right. turn it into a weapon that we're going <laughs> right. to use on them. You right. know. I mean, that's just yeah. sort of the nature of humanity <laughs> they're like they're like a parent going you know yeah you, know, you don't take the lighter yeah you <laughs> don't get the lighter, yeah, here you get the lighter. <laughs> there's <laughs> a six pack and the keys to my car right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think i mean could you explain to me who knows nothing about the psychic ability thing what do you see that as like that you were talking about how like science now is now saying that these things do vibrate at different things uh, is it the heisenberg principle or the one where they go into the, each hole and if you don't observe it it doesn't happen well what i look at it is um Everything energetically 
that has happened is happening and will happen. And this is sort of what, what Einstein and what Stephen Hawking talk about, the timelessness of time. But we think time exists because we're corporeal entities temporarily. We're born, we grow old, and we die. So we think of time moving. Linearly. In a, exactly. And it isn't that way. And so what happens is those of us who are sensitive to frequency, and my ability is to communicate with spirits, not so much fortune telling, okay? Now, because I'm not a fortune teller, right. although spirits oftentimes <coughs> convey to me future events, and if they do, then I'll convey that to you. But what we're doing is just tuning into a higher frequency, a higher vibration, like what Einstein was saying, is that matter vibrates at a low frequency, and mm -hmm. so that when we die, the energy that is housed in our brain transfers to, to this higher higher frequency. So in other words, we go from AM radio and we jump up to FM radio. Okay, right? okay. So so then for people that don't know, then so then basically you would say that if somebody dies, then you would believe in a soul or or call it whatever that 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 lives on. Yes. And that energy or whatever that's living on, you're able to communicate with that because it's vibrating at a different frequency that you're able to tap into that maybe I would not be able to. Right, and and everybody is capable of a mediumistic or psychic experience, but that does not mean that everyone is a medium or psychic per se. It's like we can all swim, but we can't all be Michael Phelps. You know, we can all do math, right. but we can't right. be you know <laughs> Professor Heisenberg. Yeah. Um, and so because th we have the pineal gland in our brain, which is a pea-sized or lima bean-sized gland about four to five inches behind the middle of the forehead, and studies conducted recently in Britain, France, Israel, and Germany um, have found that the pineal gland has both calcite and magnetite crystals. Hmm. Both of these crystals have what are known as piezoelectric properties, which mean when subjected to physical stress, they generate an electromagnetic charge. Boom, we have a radio station in our head, and the pineal gland also regulates our brainwave frequency. Hmm. And we have four level, well, actually, there's five, but there's four main brainwave frequencies beta, that's the state we're in now, the conscious awake state. Asleep is the one you're in right now, right? Well, that's when you go into <laughs> alpha. Alpha is what I call the groovy baby state, you know, like people that smoke weed, they go into alpha. Yesterday was 420, so, you know, alpha baby. <laughs> and then you go from alpha to theta, which is, is sleep, deep sleep, and then delta. Delta is like when you're essentially brain dead. But on the alpha-theta border, brainwave frequency surges. And this is when spirits can see this, and they'll bring their frequency down to get a frequency match, which is why so many people have visitation by loved ones in their dreams. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So I, I want to ask you this. Uh, Does he sound like a psychic or a scientist? That's what I love that he gives both. that part, right? Well, that's why I told you. Smarty pants right over right. here. Because, yeah, he, that last time he impressed everybody. Because, you know, people come in here, like you said, very talented psychics. But like he says, you're a seeker of truth besides just truth teller. Well, my whole life, and, and being an attorney, see, when I was um, practicing full time, um, I was a prosecutor, then I was a criminal defense attorney, but then when I was doing civil litigation, my specialization was head injury, mm -hmm. and I studied the human brain. And then when I started working with my psychic ability full-time, I started saying, wait a second, there's a correlation here. And then I found that my ideas were being supported by research conducted all over the world. And so the answer is all there. And, and the way I look at it, Tony and Captain Ron, is there's a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. Things just don't magically happen. Mm -hmm. There is a scientific and logical reason for everything. It's just that we may not know what it is. The absence of evidence doesn't mean the absence of proof. It just means we don't have the evidence at this point in time. Pretty well cool. put. Uh, well, can I ask you this question? Did you have, you well, I do have a Go question ahead. about, uh, so the frequency, uh, frequency that, that when we pass away, our bodies die, the, the shell, and we you know, ascend. ascend, how does, I mean, could you explain a little bit more about some people that may not agree or some of the people that do agree with reincarnation? That's, that's what I was just oh, going to say. That's, that's, that's great. See, we're connected. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah, that's exactly how, yeah. how, Is that the belief that it just goes on or does it come back? I mean, yeah. that's a good. What, do you, what is your thought? Dr. Robert Lanza, who's one of the foremost right. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, medical experts yeah. on the planet, has advanced the theory of biocentrism, which says that we tend to think of our body based on its biological components. In other words, I have a body, therefore I exist. But what he's saying is that when our body ceases to function, energy 
cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred, and that the energetic electromagnetic field in our brain, who and what we are, then separates from the body and goes into a different dimension and then can reattach to a new host, in other words, a fetus. So there is the biocentric theory of reincarnation. And so this is this is what I believe because in in Christianity, Islam, and to an extent Judaism, there's heaven and hell. Um, and the joke that I think I made on your show before is, but there are many levels to the other side. Right. I was right. raised Catholic, so heaven is for Catholics, purgatory <laughs> is for Protestants, and hell is for everybody, everybody else. else. <laughs> but and, but uh, the Hindus, the Buddhists, um, the the LDS Church, uh, Islam. Um, all the major religions talk about different gradations, different levels to the other side, like the different uh, stations uh, on a radio, mm-hmm. you know, and an mm-hmm. FM or AM right. or XM radio band. Uh, so what we're seeing is the idea of the archetypal hell, the guy running around with the pitchfork sticking in the tukas and, you know, throwing hot coals at you, is medieval imagery designed to frighten people into into conforming and believing a certain mm-hmm. way. But the reality is that energy is never um, um, destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. And also in the laws of physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So while there may not be hell, there certainly is karma. And one thing about karma, she never loses an address. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on board with the karma yeah. thing. I do yeah. think about that a lot. Yeah. So so do you think that, um, so you think reincarnation does occur? Absolutely. And, and then do you think that there's a thing, I've also heard that people you like reach a higher state you learn you learn you learn and then do you graduate from this and you're done with the reincarnation i've asked you know because you know yeah. I, you know this is what we want to know the you impossible know, to know. I, you know I, I was raised thinking we're going to end up in a michelangelo painting you know like <laughs> sitting on a cloud drinking yeah, some yeah, wine yeah. you know and playing bingo um <laughs> And so I've asked, I go, well, what happens? You know, do do you stop coming back? And the response was yes. I go, well, do you get to be with God? And and, 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 it, it, and it's all over. And I got the impression that, that the spirits I was communicating with were kind of laughing at me. And they said, well, what happens is you transfer to another planet or a different dimension and the cycle begins again. And I'm like, seriously? Oh, so you do keep going over, yeah, keep but going. it's in another dimension another or another dimension. world. And wow. I'm like, are you kidding me? That sounds like a well, lot of work. You I was going to ask you about the, the, the energy. So why would, if it's energy, why does this energy just stay here? I mean, you wouldn't think. They don't. Earth is not a stagnant That's or what closed I, yeah. system. And, and I love it when the people say, oh, well, there are more people alive today than have ever existed in human history. And it's like, well, isn't that nice that you know that? But the, <laughs> that's also assuming that Earth is a stagnant, closed system and that energy that's is coming in and being transferred right. yeah, yeah, yeah. constantly because the dinosaur energy went somewhere. somewhere. Right. So was I a pterodactyl or something? Well, I mean, no, you, you, the reincarnation You're a big thing, buff pterodactyl. <laughs> is that only for humans, or do you think that this is all things? Or uh, how, an, animal spirits come through a lot in readings. In fact, I was doing a reading recently for the, this family. They were really sweet people, real real country. And, Why are you and, looking at me? And, <laughs> real, yeah, yeah. It's from Kansas, right? That's right. It's from Kansas. And, well, they, they were even more country. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, their father came through, and they, they had real southern, southern accents, and and their father came through and I described him. The son goes, that's daddy. <laughs> and then there's this bear, this big black bear. I go, there is a bear sitting next to your dad. He goes, well, daddy done shot himself a big old black bear once. And the bear actually communicated with me. And it kind of said that, it, first off, it didn't resent daddy at all. And realized that, and the message was sometimes we are predators and sometimes we are the prey. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was like, and I kept waiting to hear, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, you know so <laughs> right, <laughs> the whole circle right, of life thing. But, right. but it was fascinating because I've had, I've communicated w- with a bear, um, horses, birds, uh, cats, dogs. Uh, oh, when, th- this was kind of funny, but I'm, not really funny during the reading. I was doing a reading for this uh, gentleman, and his dog came through, and then I said is that a hamster? And there was this pause. He goes, oh, my God. And I go, why? He goes, I had a dog, and I brought a hamster home from school. <laughs> My dog ate the hamster. He goes, oh, no. I go, well, this is kind of embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> you, know, no. the, you know, and I guess the dog and the hamster were okay with this. 
Um, <laughs> but but animals do communicate. Animal communication is a bit different because animals are very direct. You know, human beings, our relationships are all very nuanced and have all sorts of strings attached and subtleties. Animals, um, they either like you or they don't. Right. You know, they're very direct. And in my book, Evidence of Eternity, I wrote a whole chapter on, on animal communication because it is such a fascinating field. And I did a reading. I won't give the specifics of it. Um, but uh, I did a reading for, for this, um, this canine cop and his dog. I was so smart. I mean, this animal was given facts and figures, and and he said that that dog was the best best friend he ever had. And I'll give a little bit away. Oh, come on, you tell us a little bit. So during the reading, I said, "Wait a second, there. This doesn't feel like a human coming through. It's a dog, a really big German Shepherd, and this real tough macho cop. All of a sudden, I see him shaking, and a tear comes to his eye. And I said that." The dog is telling me that he reacted faster than any human could have at three in the morning. And I'm like, huh? And the cop loses it. And he said, we were chasing a suspect, uh, this guy that escaped from prison. And I got separated from everybody else. Mm. And I was running around. And it was three in the morning. And all of a sudden, this guy jumps at me from some underbrush, takes me down. And I see a knife come up. And it's coming down on me, and he goes, I'm going to die. And all of a sudden, the shadow comes over. It's his dog, Ajax, jumped in the way, bit the guy's arm, pulled him off of him, and started mauling him. <laughs> and he goes, and it happened at 3 in the morning. Wow. wow. That was intense. That is intense. That is really let, intense. let me ask you this. Right now, this is one of those memories that stuck in my head from a show, probably on Coast. And I, I've been wanting to find out who did it. It was 10 years ago I heard this. And... I don't remember who it was, but this this person was saying that they felt that the same thing that we rose up, that that our energy or our being of who we were lived on. But what they were saying was that we find the same people. Like there's this group of souls, right? Like in groups of thirteen or whatever, and and that when you come back in another life, you refine those same souls here on Earth. And I thought that was the most interesting, unique thing. Like kind of predestined the thing but sometimes like in other words you could come back as the father of a daughter right and you were yeah. wife and husband 10 years ago or, or 10 generations ago is there anything that you feel in, in uh, that absolutely in captain ron i'm so glad you brought that up really? I, t I tend to believe that look at it this way think of everybody in your life you know the close people as a cast of characters in a play and your life is is a play, and some people come in in certain scenes, and other people leave, you know, through divorce or right. death or, or whatever. And then you leave when your play is up. And then in the next lifetime, same cast playing different roles. And have you ever, I mean, we've all met somebody. You know, it was somebody. probably him that I heard 10 years ago, because <laughs> right. that's exactly what it was. Well, there's, the people that study reincarnations um, very much believe this, and, yeah. and uh, I see this uh, as well. And, and I've met people um, that I really feel like I've known in a prior life. Mm -hmm. Or, or they just seem so familiar, mm -hmm. and it's like, and they feel or the instant, same or way. Instant click, yeah. right? And it isn't always a romantic connection; it's just right. a God. We right. feel so kindred spirits, right? Kindred right. spirits, right, right, right. And I don't believe that that's just a fluke. Yeah. I don't believe it's a fluke. What about the people you meet, and, and instantly you're like, I'm not. Feeling yeah, this I, I believe that. <laughs> I've met some people. Well, yeah. it's like my whole life I've been at war with sociopaths, especially in the, the legal <laughs> I'm profession. Sure. I'm sure. And yeah, you meet some people that are the dark energies yeah. that, that walk amongst yeah. us, but they have their purpose too. Right. Like um, Shirley MacLaine um, got caught a lot of flowers on her show. I got to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, it was really to cool that. talking to yeah. Shirley MacLaine. But she caught a lot of flack because she was talking about the Holocaust victims. It was a karma that they had to, to go through. And so a lot of people said that, oh, you're saying that they deserved it. And that's not what she meant. She said that, you know, we play different parts in lives. OK. And and I'm certainly not in any shape, form or fashion justifying the Holocaust or, or brutality of uh, right. you know, man's inhumanity to man is just, you know, sickening. But we go through a succession of lifetimes, and we have to go through all these experiences because apparently here in the material world, we can experience things that you cannot when you're an infinite being. When your energy 
you don't get sick, you don't get old, you don't die, mm-hmm. okay? And it's like everything's on this elevated level, and you come here, and that certainly isn't the case. And it appears that we have to go through this to learn and experience things. Now, I don't understand why, and I want to know why, and that's part of why I'm on, on the search for truth. But when we're done with all this, we move on. And last year I was on tour, uh, my manager Rocky, um, um, Rocky. Having, yeah, Rocky, there she is. <laughs> uh, we, we were in uh, Buffalo, New York, and I was speaking at the Lilydale Assembly. Really? Lilydale's yes, kind of, it's like psychic Mayberry. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and it's wonder, wonderful people, wonder, uh, just fantastic organization, great experience. Uh, they've invited me back next year, oh, so nice. I look forward. And um, we get a call. And somebody said, well, hi, this is from Shirley McLean's Radio Network, uh, Independent Expressions, and we want to talk to Mark. And Rocky's like, yeah, right, who's this, you know? And they said, no, this is really Shirley McLean. And they wanted to do an interview right, you know, that day. So um, I'm in my hotel room in Buffalo, and all of a sudden I'm on the phone with Shirley McLean, And it's like, wow, what a trip. That how cool amazing. is that? And she, she's brilliant. I mean, I mean, really, she asks good questions like you guys do really in-depth, scientific and uh, filled with faith. And, and we were talking about aliens and DNA and past lives and all this. And then I said something about um, JFK. And she goes, well, you're going to have to raise the bar higher than that. And I go, what do you mean? And then I realized, oh, my gosh, Shirley McLean was part of the Rat Pack, as was mm-hmm. Peter Law. Offered, who was JFK's right. brother-in-law, and so we got on this, uh, you know, and and uh, something about Marilyn Monroe came up, and she said, "Well, Mar-, I said, well, did you know Marilyn Monroe?" And she goes, "Yes, I did," and I'm like, "Oh, I and I didn't know that." And what had happened was that Shirley started getting the roles that that Marilyn wanted. Um, because Marilyn got typecast as, you know, the the blonde bimbo. Right, and, right. And, uh, and Marilyn wasn't an idiot. You know, she, no, she, she, no, she was very, very intelligent. You know, she but she played, you know, the dumb blonde, if you will. Um, hey, to, if you make your money. And, and it made her a <laughs> lot of money. And, and she, she was an incredible actress and incredibly beautiful. But Shirley got that movie, The Apartment, mm-hmm. that Marilyn wanted. So at the premiere of The Apartment. And before I get into that, we were talking about uh, Stephen Hawking, who is a friend of Shirley MacLaine's. And she said she walked into Stephen's office and said there were two pictures on the wall, one of Albert Einstein and one of Marilyn Monroe. And she goes, well, Stephen, I get the Albert Einstein, but why the Marilyn Monroe? And and I'm going to do it the way she said, because her curves are more beautiful than a quantum singularity. (laughs) So... Back, back, I guess, 50 years ago or so, at the premiere of the movie The Apartment, Marilyn Monroe shows up here in Hollywood mm-hmm. uh, for the premiere and in a full-length fur coat. And she gets up and walks out. So Shirley follows her to the bar and says, Marilyn, is there a problem? And Marilyn turned around and opened up the fur coat and was stark naked underneath <laughs> awesome. it. Awesome. And Shirley said... I do that often. Uh, yeah, well, often. Shirley said, now looking back, um, Stephen had a point. <laughs> right, <laughs> and and so I said, oh, "Yeah, I wonder what Marilyn uh, would have to say about that." And she said, "Well, you're the psychic. You tell me." Oh. And all of a sudden, Marilyn Monroe comes through, and I delivered the message. And Shirley said, "Well, that is something Marilyn would say." And then it dawned to me, I'm talking to Shirley MacLaine on the phone and communicating with Marilyn Monroe from the other side. I really don't think I'm ever going to top <laughs> that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, yeah. I actually, uh, friends of mine, they they re- they were renovating their house, and I they actually rented out Marilyn's house. Wow! And so I got to go over because you know they don't allow anybody in there. Sure. So they said, "Well, come over." I so I got to go through the house, and, and and it is it's not you know you think it's like this big mansion. It's just a small bungalow, and. Wow, I mean, you could feel the energy. You could feel her spirit in that in that house. That's cool. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. Mark, can I ask you another question? So, because you, you touched on this when you were talking about McLean, there, what is your feeling about the other uh, life forms or aliens, if you will, in our world here? That's, that's the first part of my question: is what do you feel about that? How do you think that ties in with this? And then B is. You know, it's moving more mainstream too now. The main thinking in science is that there's 13 dimensions of space. At least. 
I mean, that's least, like the yeah. mainstream thing where you would have never thought of that 20 years ago. Yeah, we've gone away from the concept of a universe to multiverses. Correct. That's t- Tony may actually change. have to change the name to multiverse broadcast. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, it would be the first one. Yeah, multiversal. <laughs> that's multiverse. multiversal. No, but, no, but, yeah. but seriously. Um, <laughs> but, um, it, yeah, it appears that, that there. Well, uh, once again, the analogy, look at the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves, gamma waves, X. X rays, um, ultraviolet rays, within the electromagnetic spectrum, there are so many different frequencies. Why wouldn't there be with with the the multiverses with different alternate states of reality? And you know, when you start thinking about that, it gets really really heady. And yeah. I was doing research for for a presentation I'm going to be giving, and I'm reading all this quantum physics. And and one day I was really getting a headache, and I go, God, this stuff is driving me crazy. And then I came across a quote from Heisenberg, and and he said, When you think you understand quantum physics, you really don't. <laughs> and it made me feel so much better. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. It's 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 too hard. To... So does this? Do you? see things all the time like i would seem to me that would drive me crazy i don't because i you have to intentionally try to tap into it right oh how nice you can like turn off this you have to realize in a a lot of undisciplined mediums and and because people always ask me to teach them as i I don't teach so don't start contacting me that you feel connected to me and i'm going to teach you you know (laughs) well because the thing is i'm too busy on tour and and lecturing um you know there's there's plenty of psychic development classes through legitimate teachers all around the world um but you are in control, not them. And you define the parameters of when the contact is happening and when it is not happening. Interesting. Otherwise, they will be bugging you all the time. I, was, I would think that would drive right. me absolutely crazy. Right. That's amazing. Well, it will. That's why a lot of people that, that don't realize what's happening to them, oh, there's spirits around me all the time and I'm haunted and I'm this and that. It's like, tell them to leave. Mm-hmm. You can? Yes, <laughs> you can. And, and look at it this way. Do you leave the doors and windows of your house open 24 7 depends, oh, of depends not. where you live i'm no, just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well exactly i mean yeah it depends where you live but you don't want to do that to yourself psychically plus it degrades the quality of the contact so if i say i'm doing this now then they all know i'm doing this then they come in as opposed to like being bombarded all the time interesting do you feel that uh you can tell when other people really do have this ability and when they're maybe shady or not so Yeah, legitimate. we can usually spot each other in a like kind of... Like gaydar kind of a thing? Yeah, it, it is. It's like it's it's like that. It's sort yeah. of a... Because I've been in crowds of people and they just sort of lock onto the other psychics and mediums like, and we start <laughs> talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, what it is, it's a sensitivity awareness right. level. Um, it's funny you use g- gaydar, you know, because that, that, that type of yeah. thing or people that, um, um, you know, can tell... Uh, for example... What I've seen in my work as a criminal defense and prosecutor, there are people that just send out the victim vibe. <laughs> they really do. And who picks up on that? Yeah. The predators, mm-hmm. the sociopaths, okay? And I have seen that time and time <laughs> again, and it's a horrible thing. And then, of course, then there's the people who are learned victims. You know, it's like... Gee, my dad was an alcoholic who beat my mother, and gee, I have a boyfriend that keeps beating me up. Okay, newsflash. Don't date convicted felons who drink and <laughs> right, beat you. Right, okay? right. You're like, oh, you beat before? Oh, yeah, yeah. let's go ahead and get married. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we can't handle commitment. Let's just have seven children. You right, know? right. See, there's even common sense in this world of talking of these things. You know, like you said, everything you say is common sense. Just don't do that. Don't shut do this that. out. Shut, yeah, shut it out. Tell, tell the spirits I'm not doing this now. Mm-hmm. And plus, you need to get a decent night's sleep. And spirits love to communicate with us. And and for the people, you know, I know the, the people, oh, you're violating the Bible. Then try reading Romans 12, verses 6 through 8. We all have gifts from God. If your gift is one of prophecy, then you shall prophesize. Hmm. There's a lot of passages in the Bible and, you know, and, uh, that, that, that get into this. And, and uh, more that they've took it, taken out of the Bible, as you uh, know. More than, the, oh, my God. That, that, there, yeah, there's, there's another show right there. Right. Right. That drives me it's, crazy. Well, and I like what um, um, <laughs> uh, when when it went public that that I was a, uh, a psychic medium. I was working for a government agency, and this judge, um, I had to go to a meeting in his chambers, and sheriffs were there, and the public defender, and it was like a big meeting. And I walked in, and he goes, "Well, I," and and this judge, 
he used to use his courtroom on Thursday afternoons to hold Christian prayer meetings. Now, I have no problem with Christian prayer meetings, but not in a judge's courtroom because that violates separation of church and state. So he's a born-again Christian. We walk, and he goes, well, I guess we don't need a probate division anymore because he can talk to the dead. And everyone starts laughing at me, and I said, I like your Christ, but I don't like you Christians because you don't act like your Christ. He goes, how dare you say that? I go, actually, Gandhi said that. <laughs> awesome. And so he backed off. And, you know, and what happened to him is is he about two years later, which would be about two years ago now, he got into an argument with a public defender in courtroom, and this is on video. He got off the bench and beat up the public defender. It hit national news. He oh, was karma. Re- karma See? never loses an address because the Florida Supreme Court removed him from Smart. the bench. So crazy. the theme about karma and about what every religion teaches can be summed up in two words: be nice. Be nice. That's what it's all about. Golden rule, buddy. Well, we're. I mean, we're uh, out of time, and uh, we actually we did because you said something about taking a call. Do you mind taking a quick call? Absolutely. And I'll be happy to. So the to. caller, when we take, just make sure you're very specific. We're going to just make this just a couple minutes because uh, we got to get off the air. But uh, I think this is uh, Kathy. You're on with Mark. So go ahead and ask your question, and hopefully uh, Mark can help you out. Hi. Hi, Kathy. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> uh, my question, really quick. Um, having vibration in my upper back and my head and the doctors they can't find out what's wrong okay so now i'm going for mris next week because nobody can figure this out so what is your question what i mean are you wanting do you know know what the vibrating is in my back and my head well, that's not really my area of expertise. Not a medical intuitive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's what I suggest is go for the MRI and oh. also the nerve conduction studies yeah. and find out what's going on because this could be a whole lot of things and um, yeah. th- there is an answer. But without the diagnostic testing, the doctors can only guess. So. Are you wanting to do okay, a... Okay, um, tell me what... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Kathy. Did you, if you, then could you tell me what my life purpose is? What do you think it is? Healing. There you go. That's your life purpose. And the vibration that and you're feeling here healing. is the struggle that you're going through to discern and discover what is physically ailing you is part of what's going to help you as a healer. And what's the sad part can be sometimes those who heal are afflicted with things that cannot be healed, but that does not keep them from healing others. If you look at the lives of a lot of the saints, uh, like Bernadette of Lourdes, who had these incredible My visions, movie. exactly, and, and uh, the waters from the grotto in Lourdes have cured um, well over 100 people, then there's no explanation of that yet Bernadette herself died from a horrible disease a lot of the saints died at early ages because they were healers and this a tremendous amount of energy came through them now that being said that I am not saying that you're going to die anytime soon or or any of that what I'm saying is that what you're going through with the vibration I'm sure there's a logical answer to it and a cure and a treatment um, but if your purpose is healing, it may be that you must be yeah. afflicted in order for you to understand what it is to be a healer. Oh, okay. Well, I think I, that actually even popped in my head. It's like maybe that's yeah. There not, you go. If you're not utilizing your gift, maybe that's the vibration. So, but We're, Kathy, thank you so much for I'm calling not- in. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. I love you. Hi, Tony. Love you, too. I love you, too. And uh, keep listening, okay? Oh, please. All the girls love Tony. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I'm trying. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh. All right, well, we got to get out of here, but Mark, uh, you're going to be on The Doctors coming up uh, this coming Monday. Monday, April 24th. Um, check local listings for time. I will be uh, the guest appearing on The, the Doctors, um, and it, it, it's such a great honor, and I want to thank um, everybody here at UBN and everybody over at CBS uh, 
Paramount Studios and everyone connect with the doctors and um, I look forward to coming back, Tony. You're going to be back. I Absolutely, mean, we we love you. I, mean, I I listen. He doesn't usually get into the psychic stuff to see you him got get a fan. E- to get it, see him get excited about it. I'm like, you, you've done a great job. So, uh, so you can go to his website, uh, Evidence of, Eter- of Eternity dot com, and uh, pick up his books. Uh, go to his website, find out where he's going to be uh, touring and speaking and doing workshops. And I look forward to seeing you again, Mark. Thanks, Tony. And to all your listeners, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you, too. All right, we're out of here. So next time, uh, go to our uh, truthbetoldwebtv.com. Check out our uh, YouTube channel, Truth Be Told TV, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, all that good stuff. So Contact in the Desert. Con- oh, yeah, we're going to go to Contact in the de- Desert in May. So catch us uh, live. We're going to be doing a lot of interviews out there. So it's going to be a pretty good time. But until then, we'll see you next time on Truth Be Told. Bye.